Hello and thank you to everyone who is joining us for today's webinar on tape and its relevance in HPC environments. I'm Bob Cohn and I'll be hosting our webinar today, uh, meaning I will collect any questions you have for our speaker who I will introduce in just a minute here. So uh, use that chat box to submit questions anytime throughout the webinar and then we will uh, leave a, a, a few minutes at the end to answer those questions. Before we jump into it, for those of you who are not familiar with Spectrologic. We are headquartered out of a beautiful Boulder, Colorado, known to many as the Silicon Valley of storage in the uh, storage industry. We have offices spread across the world. We uh, do all of our sales operations uh, for EMEA out of our Bracknell office in the UK, and then the Asia PAC uh, office is located in Sydney, Australia. Uh, one of the things that I really like to point out about Spectrologic is that we've been doing this for nearly 40 years years, making us the longest standing manufacturer dedicated solely to secondary storage in the industry. The second thing I like to point out is that we're a privately held organization, meaning our shareholders are really our customers. So you vote with your dollars and it puts us very in close, uh, very close in touch to those that we work with in developing solutions and making sure we develop solutions that work for specific customer needs. Now you could take my word for it, uh, but I am a little bit biased. I think this is also proven by some of the largest data users in the world. Many of those high performance computing sites, that is actually our number one vertical market. So with that being said, I want to introduce uh, Mr. John Benson, who is going to be our speaker today. Uh, we could virtually do a webinar on this man alone. Uh, for almost 25 years, John worked for Storage Tech and then later Sun through that acquisition. He was the vice president and general manager of the tape business when Sun bought STK in 2005. And after the acquisition by Sun, he served as senior vice president of worldwide storage for tape and disc. During his tenure, John directed the product and business development of numerous tape libraries, tape drives, and tape software platforms, from the early solutions that some of you are probably still familiar with, like the powder horns, all the way up through more recent uh, uh, products, such as the SL8500, SL3000, and the T10000 tape drives. As Spectrologic Vice President and General Manager of Emerging Technologies and Engineering, John's responsible for developing new products that address future data center requirements and oversee Spectra's engineering development and quality. So I can't think of anyone more qualified to give us an overview of new tape developments and tapes relevance in the HPC market today. Now I also want to mention before I turn it over to John, this will be a series of webinars. So we have a pretty focused scope in our discussion today, but we will continue to uh, uh, pull out different aspects within HPC. So look forward to new invitations to those webinars as they come. With no further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. John Benson. Are you with us, John? Um, so if I go back to the beginning, talk a little bit about the high performance computing market. Um, we start off with uh, a slide that talks about why this market is interesting and why it really sets the pace for a lot of the technology in the industry. So if you look at the size of the market, um, obviously a multi-billion dollar market uh, with a very, very healthy CAGR and growth. And uh, why that's interesting is that this is a market that all of the vendors out in the marketplace look at and really does set some of the trends for technology. So as we go into the technology that fills the needs for this market, let me start out with um, one of the technologies that's new that I think is super important and critical to where we're moving forward with tape, and that's a TMR tape head. Now TMR stands for tunneling. It's the next generation in tape heads over a GMR head. Um, GMR heads are heads that we've used for the past 10 to 15 years, uh, which have powered the early generations of LTO and the early generations of the TS drive and the T10K drives as well, for those of you who know about Oracle drives. Um, but TMR uh, is something that uh, we've spent millions of dollars to refine and perfect, um, and it really does set the pace for the next decade plus, probably for the next 10 to 15 years, in regards to the capability of tape drives. Um, the reason for that is uh, this particular head um, is four times more sensitive to the signal to noise ratio, which is really what you're trying to do when you pick up data off of a particular uh, tape. Uh, 
Um, so bottom line to this particular head is, is now that it's been perfected and now that the money's been invested, for at least the next decade, you can be assured that there will be tape drives that can expand at the current Moore's Law rate that we've been on. The second thing I'd like to talk about is barium ferrite media and the importance to that. So um, if you go out on their websites, both Fuji and Sony have data on this, but you can see that we've demonstrated now um, two to three hundred terabytes of data being able to be written on one of these barium ferrite cartridges. Um, that's super important because just like the TMR heads and the ability to advance this technology for more than a decade, the media is now in the same place where it can advance the technology for more than a decade. So when you combine the TMR heads and you combine barium ferrite media, you now have technology that will move us forward and ensure that um, your investments today will continue on throughout this decade and beyond. Now, if I move to the next slide, um, cost is one of the key things that really separates tape from the other pieces in the market. So, uh, and over time, obviously, cost has been uh, a key element to tape, and tape has been a, tape lead, uh, a cost leader on that. But one of the things that is now starting to shift is the delta in cost between tape and disc. And the reason for that is the fact that the disc guys have now run into a physics problem. So um, if you look at what disc technology has done over the last three to five years, you'll see um, the technologies that advanced it aren't really sustainable. So things such as filling the drives with helium, the reason they filled them with helium was so they could put more platters in, but even with helium in, the maximum number of platters you can get in one of those devices goes up to eight. Um, the other things is shingling the media. But when you shingle the media, you can only shingle so far over and you maxed out that technology. And so if you look at the disk industry right now with the 10 and 12 terabyte disk drives that are coming out, probably we're going to see a max out at about 14 to 16 by the time you put in all the helium, all the shingling, etc. What does that mean to tape technology? Well, as I just mentioned with the TMR heads and the barium ferrite uh, technology, we have the ability to continue to stay on Moore's Law and double the capacity for at least the next multiple generations where the disc industry is not going to be able to do that at this point. And so um, I project and foresee the fact that tape will continue to improve its cost advantage over disc um, and provide better value to our customers. Um, other key things to it, um, I mentioned the barium freight is good for the next uh, decade plus in regards to its capacity, but it's also different in regards to how long it'll last. So traditional tape was based on metal particle or MP tape. Barium ferrite is a different type of substance and it's actually an oxide. And so because it's an oxide, it doesn't deteriorate like metal particle used to deteriorate. And so if you look at the um, testing done on barium ferrite, we're well past 30 years in regards to longevity without any degradation in regards to the data. So what that means is in a true archive scenario, you can archive these tapes for a very, very long time and never have to worry about the fact that your data is still there. Um, other couple of key points to mention here is the reason that tape um, is continue to advance its ability um, and capacity over disk is not just the fact that we no longer have physics problems uh, like the disk industry has, but we also have uh, at least a thousand times more space on a tape. If you look at a tape, uh, depending on what tape you look at, you're anywhere from 900 to over 1100 meters of tape uh, of a half inch wide tape and that just provides a lot of surface area in regards to its ability uh, to record data. And then the last thing is the portability of, of tape. And portability is interesting in the fact that when you want to move large amounts of data, literally petabytes or tens of petabytes of data, if you go out and you look at what type of bandwidth um, there is out there on the internet uh, to be able to move data back and forth, um, what you find is that's a very expensive proposition once you get into the petabytes of data. Obviously, below petabytes, there's technologies out there that work just fine, but when you get into petabytes, which is where tape really starts to shine, uh, the portability makes a, a big difference. Now, if we move over to the, the types of drives, uh, Spectra um, provides both 
uh, Enterprise TS-11 uh, 50 and 55 drives as well as the LTO 7 and 8 drives. Um, if you look at the traditional roles of both of those drives, um, TS is uh, traditionally been for the uh, smaller reads and writes, you know, the, the type of jobs where you had a lot of loads and unloads on the drives where the tape didn't stay on the drive very long. Um, where LTO was really about uh, long drives, staying on the drives, bright and full tapes. Um, as the technologies have progressed, um, TS11XX will still be the technology leader in advancement of what's going to get the newest technology. So in other words, the first to come out with the, the, the new head designs, the deck designs, etc. However, LTO has uh, really closed the gap on a lot of those things. So at this point, we believe both the drives from a quality reliability point of view are very, very equivalent and uh, really um, you should probably put both of them into your environment and we allow obviously both in your environment and kind of segregate those in regards to where they're most needed. So if you have jobs that are going to be HSM recall types of jobs or short reads, TS is still going to be the leader. It's going to be slightly faster. Um, it's going to have slightly better uh, rewind time, slightly better search capabilities. Um, but if you don't have those needs, LTO is going to give you a better value and now that the LTO technology uh, is very similar to the TS technology, also going to give you the same advantages of being able to keep your media for 30 years, be able to do uh, a, a fairly high duty cycle, uh, and particularly in environments where full tapes are, are being written. So if we look at the TS-1155 technology, um, we continue to um, advance that technology. Obviously the TS-1150 was at about 10 terabytes. Uh, the 1155 is at 15 terabytes and the speed is now improved to 360 megabytes per second. Um, all of that's uh, goodness in regards to how fast you can get the data on and off of your tape. Um, but another key element to this that a lot of people don't pay much attention to but it's really important is the bit error rate. Bit error rate's basically the ability for the data to stay um, good for a very long period of time. I mentioned that barium ferrite is an oxide and therefore the materials in barium ferrite are going to keep the data for a long time. But the fact that the bit error rate is 10 to the minus 20 is equally important. And if you compare that to disk, uh, disk is going to be uh, 10 to the minus 15 uh, or five orders of magnitude um, less uh, uh, reliable in regards to bit error rate than you're going to get off of the tape technology. Um, if we project forward in regards to uh, TS-11 uh, series, obviously the 1155 just released. Um, what you're going to see is a series of, uh, of these half steps. So the TS-1150 to 60 uh, doubling, the TS-1155 to 65 doubling. Um, and really that provides a way for us to bring out new technologies along with being able to increase capacities. Um, and based on the TMR heads, barium ferrite, and recording technologies we have now, I don't see any reason why we can't continue to stay on a very healthy growth rate in regards to Moore's Law. Now, there is one piece in this that will change things a little bit. Some of you may ask, why do we only go from uh, to 15 to 20 terabytes between the 55 and the 60? And somewhere in the middle of this, we are going to have to change the deck motors, and the reason the deck motors are going to have to change is because as we double the number of tracks on tape drives, the tracks are getting narrower and narrower and while the heads and the recording media are capable of those narrower heads, we have to guide at a tighter rate and so there will be one more refresh that we come up with here shortly. Uh, fortunately, it's not a difficult one because it doesn't involve uh, huge chemical or physics problems like you would get with the heads in the media, but we will have to change the motor guides so that they have less vibration so we can track at a tighter uh, a rate. Um, if we move over to LTO8 technology, I think the key thing to LTO8 technology is really the time to market. So um, if you look over the past, um, we were at a, a go to market every couple of years with a new technology and then that started to expand out to two and a half to three years. Um, with some new investments uh, in the tape drive uh, itself in regards to R&D investments, the uh, schedules are now back on a two-year technology. So you can expect that every two or slightly longer uh, time frame we'll be producing the next generation. So LTO8 uh, releases here very shortly. Uh, you can expect it to be uh, at about 12 terabytes native. 
Um, there's no published data rates on that, but you can expect those data rates to also be better than LTO7, and so uh, those will both also be advanced. Um, and then expect as far as the LTO roadmap to go, that every couple of years uh, that we'll start to double the capacity of, of the LTO technology. So obviously LTO 8 releases, like I say, very shortly. Um, Bob's going to talk about that here in a second in regards to pre-purchase program. Um, but we're also working on LTO 9, and uh, Spectre works very, very closely with IBM. And so um, we follow the technology and help with that technology and see no reason all the way out to 10 and 11 uh, why we won't have these kind of capacities in futures. Um, just to make a few comments in regards to our tape libraries that go along with the tape drive. So obviously I mentioned the tape drive technology and how it's moving forward. Um, we also are advancing our tape library technology. Uh, the slide you have in front of you shows the capacities that you can now get with this technology. Um, and we're over a, a, an exabyte and a half in a Tfinity. Uh, exabyte and a half, of course, being an outrageous amount of data in the past, but for HPC customers, um, actually quite a number that isn't that amazing anymore. And so uh, we foresee the ability to take this technology, and particularly with we move forward with the new tape drive technologies, uh, and be able to advance that. Um, the other key thing that we've done uh, with our libraries that's important for HBC accounts is we've improved our performance. And so what you're going to see is performance coming out of us um, and with our high-speed transporter we've more than doubled our performance and we also have software coming out uh, that will advance it beyond that. And so uh, we have demonstrated uh, ad accounts right now uh, speed of 350 cycles per hour, a cycle being take a tape cartridge out of our tape terror pack, put it into the drive, and then take it out of the drive and put it back into the terror pack. So two moves basically equals one cycle. And now we're able to do 350 of those in an hour. Um, and uh, with a new technology that we call Group IQ, uh, which is similar to rate or even rate technology that some of you are familiar with, we can get to over 500 cycles in an hour. And so Spectra is making quite a bit of investment in regards to the types of things that HPC customers are going to want to see in their libraries. So um, I don't have time to uh, spend on that. Uh, in detail today because this webinar is really about tape technology, but I would encourage you to meet with your Spectra sales rep and learn about the the new uh, Tfinity Exascale features that really line up to the HPC uh, marketplace. Um, and then, uh, of course, uh, LTO media uh, goes along with the TS media and uh, we have a full selection of libraries that fit all of our LTO drives from, uh, from 50 cartridges all the way up to 50,000 cartridges. Last thing I'd like to talk about is what we call our TriMedia support. TriMedia is really the ability to not only include um, the LTO and TS drives in the same library that we currently ship, but the ability to also include the Oracle T10K um, drives into um, our libraries. And so with a Tfinity Exascale library, you're now able to mix and match virtually every kind of tape drive in the marketplace, whether it be a, an LTO uh, from, you know, an LTO3 all the way up to an LTO8, uh, an IBM TS1150, 1155, etc., or an Oracle T10K drive. Um, all of them go in the library, all of them can use the same slots, all of them use the same terra packs, and all of them use the same technology uh, that you can find out from your sales rep in regards to what our new Tfinity Exascale tape library feature set brings. So with that, I'll turn it back over to Bob for a second to talk just a little bit about pre-purchase program. All right. Thank you, John. And again, I apologize to everyone for those uh, technical difficulties right up front, but it looks like we got it running smoothly now. I did want to say a few words uh, before we open to Q&A, so if you have any questions, feel free to go ahead and start typing those in now. I see one or two have come in already. Um, we do offer at Spectra a pre-purchase program, which is unique in the industry. Uh, currently, we are shipping LTO7 drives. As John mentioned, LTO8, is, uh, is its release is imminent. We're expecting that in the October, November, 
November time frame uh, for individuals who are looking for uh, tape libraries currently we offer what we call the preach purchase program which allows you to take any of the tape libraries that we manufacture with today's shipping drives which are LTO 7 and then have those drives upgraded to LTO 8 as those uh, become available. So this will run through the end of this calendar year for any of those uh, who want to go ahead and get started with the technology uh, but want to have the latest greatest that will follow on with the LTO 8 drives. Very simple process of, of swapping those drives out. It actually can even be done in the field. So with that being said we are going to switch to questions. If you have any questions and I'm going to jump over and open that uh, pane of my control window here uh, please feel free to type them in now. As I mentioned, we had a couple have already come in, uh, and it looks like John. <clears throat> um, even though this came, it looks like these are coming in right at the end. I want to I want to pose these questions first because we we have two questions that are uh, along the lines of why we are incorporating the T10,000 or T10K drive into our libraries, given the issues that we have seen at Oracle. Okay, Bob. So, um, good question. So, let's start with um, your statement on the issues we've seen at Oracle. Um, as many of you know, um, last year in 2016, Oracle discontinued uh, their T10K product line and uh, essentially laid off the majority of that organization. Um, what may, some of you may not know is Oracle's also done that to their tape library group. So in the last two weeks, they've essentially uh, laid off the majority of their tape library groups. So um, what we see uh, is a issue in the marketplace for our customers who had Oracle technology to what are they going to do to move forward in regards to um, the investment they already have in T10K tape. If you look at uh, cost of media, et cetera, uh, many of our customers have you know, literally hundreds of thousands of dollars tied up in just media. And so how do we migrate those across? And so what we did was we um, we incorporated the T10K drive into our Tfinity libraries just like we would have a TS1155 drive. Now, you can do this in a variety of ways. You can mix and match the drives, as I mentioned. And you can also take and put the Oracle media and take it out of, whether it be an 8500, a powder horn, et cetera, put it in a Spectra Terra Pack and put it inside a Tfinity library and that allows our users to be able to keep the investment protection they had uh, in their past investment and allow them to migrate to a new technology, whether that be TS or whether that be LTO, uh, and do that in a more painless fashion. And John, another question that came in along those lines, and I, I think you addressed it, but I just want to make sure. Uh, so if we have, uh, if we're placing these libraries with the uh, T10,000 drives, those drives are the customer drives, correct? We are not actually shipping those drives from Spectra? Right. So um, basically, given that the technology is an end-of-life technology, what uh, we suggest to our users is just take the drives that you have right now, Pick another technology, whether that be TS or LTO, uh, or both. Take the Oracle drives, the T10K drives, put them into a Spectra library, or migrate them out of the Spectra or the uh, the Oracle library. Either way, and move them onto a new technology. What that would mean basically is, for all new writes and new reads, you'd write to your new technology. For all old recalls off of an Oracle T10K drive. You would read that in from the original T10K drive and tape, and then when it came to the system, the new write would then go out to a new technology. And I should also um, add to this, Bob, that we have professional services that go along with this, along with a white paper on how you would do this migration. Well, I don't have enough time on this webinar to go through the details. I would encourage everybody on the phone, if you're interested, to see your sales rep, and we can set up a private phone call uh, with yourself and us to kind of go through what your environment looks like and come up with a plan on how to make that as least painful as uh, we can for you to make that migration take place. Okay, great. And last question, unless we get any more at the end here, uh, what types of migration applications does Spectra work with? Yeah, so Bob, so in the beginning I mentioned the fact that HPC is a very important uh, vertical market for us. Uh, we obviously work with all the standard software that's out there today, whether that be HPSS, DMF, et cetera. 
Uh, and we also have some technology of our own uh, that we call Black Pearl, uh, which allows for a REST interface, a cloud-like interface, you will, for private clouds uh, that can work in these environments as well. Um, so um, we spend quite a lot of money and investment making sure that we fit into all the different types of software that's out there. We also provide our own software, and we have, as I mentioned earlier, migration techniques uh, to move data back and forth. And so rather than go to that more detail, what I encourage everybody on the phone to do is sign up for the next webinar uh, because I believe that was going to be a key topic in the next webinar is to start talking about a little bit about how the software function works in these environments and how that plays better with our tape libraries and tape drives. Okay, fantastic. That uh, that completes the questions that we had written in. I want to thank everyone again for joining us uh, by uh, being a part of this webinar. You will get a copy of the slide deck, so we'll be sending that out. Uh, we'll also include a link to that white paper that John referenced on uh, Oracle Migration, which is on our website. So uh, we'll make sure everyone gets that. Look for invitations for the upcoming webinars, and thank you again, everyone, for joining us.